Thank you. Um, welcome everyone for the NPTEL LA Tools course first live interaction session. And in this session, we will uh, talk about some of the questions discussed in the Google form. Some questions discussed in the discussion form, mostly for the major courses discussed. Then we will talk about what we have done till now in this session. Then if there's any questions in the live chat, we'll take it. So. If any questions, in, uh, if you want to enter, please add your questions in the live chat. I'll share a couple of slides. So with me, we have a TA, Sayatu Mateshwari. Hello, everyone. Yeah, Sayatu would be the one who would be replying to your comments for now. I think we'll be getting in the replies for the discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the replies, what you have got in discussion forum, they, they were from me. Yeah, that is Sayatu. Sayatu is our uh, third year PhD student uh, working on computer science education. So let me share the screen. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So. Welcome to the live interaction session. So we'll go to the first the questions asked in the Google forum. Um, so there are a couple of questions, basic. What is learning analytics? What tools can be used? It's basically from the title of the course. I think if you have watched the first week of the course, we discussed learning analytics is about understanding the learners' learning processes, how they learn, not just the outcome, not the the end cell prediction of end cell exam, not prediction of their uh, uh, you know, uh, the mid sem marks, uh, the attendance, instead of that, we want to understand how the students learn over the period of a time. And uh, to do that, we use a lot of tools, a lot of data. And uh, we collect this data in order to understand how students learn so that we can optimize this, the environment they are working in. Maybe classroom, it can be the web-based learning environment. We want to collect this data and optimize the, the the environment they're working on it so that the learning performance can be improved. That is the whole goal of learning analytics. That's a definition discussed in the week one. And um, there are a lot of tools in the sense, um, in the sense we can use a lot of tools such as uh, SPM, secret pattern mining, DSM. Yeah. yeah. So the tools like SPM, DSM, uh, Power BI, for the visualization. Um, then you can use ML uh, tools like uh, Rapid Share or Vega, all those things are there. But we won't be able to teach all the tools in this course. Uh, the idea is that to introduce, uh, there are different tools can be used. And most of you, most of that is that you go and search for those tools. For example, when we collect the data, we could use uh, some of the visualization tools to visualize the data using uh, dashboards like a, a Power BI, a Tableau, something like that. You should go and explore how to do that. It's there are a lot of uh, videos are available on YouTube how to teach it. So you could collect your own data and put it in it. Second, you could see correlation. You could do the uh, sequential pattern mining. Those kind of tools, the algorithms will talk about it. Uh, since the Gen AI is there nowadays, um, it's no need to to tool, right? You can go and ask systems to create proper plots, or you can system to create a proper sequential pattern mining. So the one tool would support, suffice all of those things. But we will talk about process mining tool, we'll talk about some ML tools. We can't cover all the tools, but we we'll introduce them. But once you know one tool, say orange, you could use the same kind of idea and other tools in ML. So if you are an electrical engineering student, how this course can be understood? 
it doesn't matter which student you are. It can be electrical or uh, you know uh, science or uh, engineering or, uh, or education. It is all about we are been in this education system for last so many years. You know, as a, as a students from a school from college. So you know that in education systems we are uh, we give feedback only as form of exams at the end of semester or the mid semester, and that feedback also not being used to provide a pedagogy properly. So the goal here is that can we collect more data about the learners when they are interacting with the, in the classroom or in the web based system? So in that goal, it doesn't matter which department or stream you are from. Um, we will be talking about very less programming or no programming. We will not talk about any ML, uh, mathematics or anything. We not, that is not a goal. Instead, here the goal is to what data can be collected, how those data can be used in ML to diagonize, predict, and analyze the data. That's all. This is the four levels we talk about. So there's, there's like different tools. For example, descriptive analytics, go and use the tools like Tab, Tableau or Power BI or just use Chennai to uh, do the descriptive plots. For the diagnosis, we recommend you to use pattern mindings, correlation tools, any of the correlation software, uh, PSN or SPMN will do. For the predictive analytics, uh, any ML uh, tools like uh, Orange, uh, Rapid, uh, Rapid Miner, or Vika, anything would work. And everything is kind of free. Orange is kind of free. Vika is like from the university, so it's open source and free. Rapid Miner is free for a few weeks. There are more other AI tools out there which you could uh, automatic, automate those whole uh, ML process. So you could use any of those tools. So these are the questions from the Google forum. I'll just move on to the questions from the discussion forum. So uh, there's one question. I think it's, I just answered this question. It was a very interesting question. In this course, uh, in final exam, there'll be any questions from outside the, the content or in assignment. So I think as per the NPTEL rule, we will do say around 25 to 30 percentage of questions from recall level, which means directly from the slides. If you have watched the slides, if you have listened to the slides, you would be able to get those direct questions, 25 to 30 percentage. From the assignment, we'll have another 25 percentage range. So if you did all the assignments, you will have another 25. And from the assignment, just numbers change are uh, the same process, say finding kappa score, finding the pattern, same process, but just, just the numbers change would happen for another 25. So assignments, uh, if you do it perfectly, you get over 50% of questions from the assignments only. Another 20 to 30 from, um, you know, uh, recall from the slides directly. Another 20 to 30 from open question. That can be application question. That is not directly from state, but you need to understand and apply in the concept. For example, if you have done a cup of a two cross two, I would ask you to cup up for three cross three table. How do you do that? That kind of question should be coming last 20%. That is to identify the, you know, the, the students who are done well and who understood the concepts very well. That's all. Uh, in a normal classroom ambience, what and how data collected, how to collect data and pre-process data. I think we have, um, uh, we have discussed this in the week two uh, about what data to collect. In a normal classroom, you could collect data such as uh, very common data such as attendance, uh, the personal profile like a gender, age. These are very uh, you know, uh, independent data. But there are other data you collect in the sense uh, the performance in the assignment one, the performance of quiz, all those data and how this performance impacts the final outcome. So if you have the teaching course for the last five years, you could collect those kind of data from the performance in the quiz assignments, use those for the each topic wise and see whether attendance has impact, any teaching strategies impact on it. But these are the very um, not process level data, this is like abstract level data. So you could collect all those data and you could collect data such as human observation, where you can collect the engagement, how much time students is highly engaged in the class, are they actively engaged? Are they interacting with the class? Are simply passively engaged in the sense of just watching, not taking notes? Are the students are, uh, you know, interacting with others uh, and uh, arguing about the new topic or creating, solving the problems? Those kind of engagement can be recorded. Are the students are simply looking at the laptop or gaze shifting? Those also can be recorded. But if you are doing the human observation based engagement or human observation based affective states or anything, human observation of 
students question asking skills. Make sure you do the reliability test. What is the reliability test? I think we'll talk about it. I think we talked in the second week. Reliability in the sense that if I collect the data saying that student is watching a, a laptop while playing with the mobile phone or talking to a teacher, how reliable is this data? I might be biased. I might be saying the student is not, uh, maybe just take the phone, but you say he's talking to, uh, chatting in the phone. A uh, student is not interested or not, but may not be in their interest, we don't know. So to check whether the data is reliable, I'm not talking about validity. Validity is easy to do here. If I am a reliable data, for my data is given, is it right data to go and use it in the research paper? I need another observer who, who also observes the same set of students. Then we discuss whether we have agreement on it or not. If all of them have agreement, then we'll consider that as a reliable data. To make this agreement, we check the Kogan's Kappa. The Kogan's Kappa will be taught in the fourth week or the second week. I think we talk about Kogan's Kappa in the second, third or fourth week. I forgot the weeks, but fourth, fourth week Kogan's Kappa will come. So there we talk about if the two raters are uh, agreeing on the affective states on or the engagement, not agreeing on certain states, how these uh, agreement is measured. It's called Kogan's Kappa we measured. So if you can collect data in the classroom, a lot of data like exam scores, all those data. These are the available data, plus you can do human observations. Now let me go to the other data. Um, if you are if you have a, if you have a cameras, you could fix if you have a, a close circuit come CCTVs, you could collect the data from students. Or you have your own camera, collect the data, students interaction, whatever, video processing. Uh, before, please get the consent and everything. I think it's very important. After collecting data, you can do the computer vision. A lot of students work on that now. So now we can see, we can find identify the object that is a person and the person, each person's uh, hand and shoulder, everything can identify. That is one task. After identifying, you can see how they engaged, are they interacting with the computer. You could do those kind of things. That's the one. If you are a teacher, if you want to collect data, you, you are making a group of students interact in the classroom. So you are making the 10 groups in the classroom. Each group has a four students or something. You are sitting in the classroom. You are giving some task on solving some mathematical problems or solving some project on it. What you could do is, um, you could do a simple one. You could do is, uh, uh, actually you could uh, ask the students um, to interact and you could collect the audio voice data. So they are interacting that discourse data, the discussion between the students can be collected. Those data can be analyzed using speech to test and identify the, the, the student who are talking. So it's called diarization I Identify the speaker, based on the speaker thing, you could able to understand are they negotiating, are they co-creating the knowledge, are they solving some problem? Those kind of things can be done. So now, uh, the first set of data I mentioned about score, gender, it's a very common data you could collect at the, you know, at the end of this order of events. Or you can do continuous data in terms of the facial expressions or human observation or the voice data. These are data can be collected in the classroom. And if you're, if you're interested, you could uh, convert this computer vision or audio data analysis. There are really a lot of data as possible and that will be a lot of new insights in uh, learning analytics. This has been very less been done. Are there any more detail on learning behavior on supporting material? I'm not sure about learning behavior because all things we talk about is learning behavior in the sense clicks they do in the classroom, in the sense the facial expressions are behavior, the high gaze is a behavior, the voice is a behavior, um, everything is a behavior. You try to collect the data. That's all I do with learning analytics. What are supporting materials available? I would recommend if you're interested in advanced topics in LA. I would recommend take the LA Methods book. The two books are available by Professor Mohan Sakar from Finland. Um, you could read those books all about uh, different methods which we are going to talk in the class. And with more detail and more methods has come, new and latest methods with the R code available. So you could also use the code to run your own data. If you are want to understand the whole field in a general, I don't want to go only the tools to uh, so analyze the data, check the book on and books on LA. It is created uh, just from the solar community. They publish books in every 10 years. So I think last book came in 2021. I think it's a book. So second version of and books on LA. It talks about different topics in uh, learning analytics as a chapters and you can discuss that. That's how the tools sources I would recommend if you're interested.
So I just also want to talk about uh, what is what does things we did in earlier classes so far. So we actually wanted to measure the learning processes. We don't want to uh, measure the cognition only, the sense, the uh, understanding by in the means of uh, exams or quiz. I think we want to measure the how the learning has happened for each and every student so that we can provide a better feedback. So we wanted to analyze the trace data so that all the best way is that tracing the learning interactions. So learning interaction in the computer-based systems, all the clicks they do can be recorded. Uh, you can do the AGS data by using the web camera. You can do a facial expression using the web camera. So we're going to collect all this data in the computer-based learning environments. In a classroom, you could also do the big camera, the CCTV camera, normal cameras. Or you can voice, voice data can connect, or you can do human observations. All those data can be collected. These are the data we could collect, either computer-based or the classroom traditional environment. Then we will talk about four types of learning analytics in this last three. This is first four weeks I'm talking about. The analytics include descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. We will not talk much about prescriptive, only talk about these three ideas. Then we talked about, we will talk about different data collection. There is a classroom and web-based systems. And how to do pre-processing, what is the consent form, what is ethics in data collection is very important. We will also introduce very basics in ML. The reason for introducing basic ML is to that, so that you know when the data comes in, how to classify, how to predict everything. Then we also talk about how to visualize the descriptive analytics will start from the week four. After week four, uh, week five, week six, we solve diagnostic analytics. Week seven, eight, we talk about trade to analytics. So that's the idea of this whole course. So I think that's all we wanted to cover today. I think for the first 20 minutes, we want to plan about what are the, uh, you know, uh, questions and what are the, uh, you know, the course covered so far. If you have any questions, you could um, uh, please enter the questions in the chat box so that you could answer. We'll wait for five more minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to answer. Type your questions. OK, I'll wait for the another two or three minutes. Then we could uh, end this session. Another food for thought is that I think we are talking about LA classes. I and mean, this lecture has been recorded, you know, five, six years ago. In between, you modified some on the pre-processing content, how to do that. But uh, last three years, Jenya has taken, you know, everything has been changing, the way we interact with, the way we communicate, the way we do research, the way we read and teach, everything has been changing because of Jenya. Um, I would recommend everybody to think about how to use Gen AI, uh, how Gen AI can help in learning analytics, or uh, how to analyze the interaction in Gen AI using learning analytics. I think those two questions you could start thinking. It's a very interesting part to think, and uh, that would also help. Okay, I think uh, since there's no questions, uh, we could close this session. And thanks, thanks again for joining. And uh, please continue le learning this course. And if you have any questions, please post in the discussion forum. Setu will answer and, uh, and uh, enjoy the classes. Thank you.